Important steps of computer system validation process include 1. User Requirements Specification 0.5s Think of the user requirements specification as the wish list or the what of the system. When you're planning to buy or build something, for example, a car, the user requirements specification would be the list of things you want the car to do. In the context of a computer system, the user requirements specification outlines what the system must do from the user's perspective. It answers questions like, what tasks must the system perform? How should it behave under certain conditions? What regulations must it meet? For example, the system should allow us to securely manage patient data, and it should comply with FDA regulations for electronic records. In simple terms, the user requirements specification is what you want the system to do before anything is built or configured. 2. Functional Specifications FS. After the ORS tells us what the system needs to do, the functional specifications explains how the system will do it. The functional specifications is where the technical team starts to translate the requirements into features. If the user requirements specifications says, I need a system that stores patient data, the functional specifications will describe how the system will store the data, what kind of database it will use, and how users will input and retrieve the data. Example. The system will use a secure SQL database to store patient records, and users will access the data through a web interface with a password. In short, the functional specifications is about describing how the system will function to meet the user's needs. 3. Design Specifications DS. Now that we know what the system needs to do, ORS, and how it will do it, FS, we need to figure out how to build it. The Design Specifications DS, outline the actual blueprint for constructing the system. Think of it as designing a building. The architect, in this case, the technical team, creates a detailed plan, showing how all the parts will fit together, what software will be used, what hardware is required, and how everything will communicate. Example. The database server will be hosted on a Linux machine, and the user interface will be developed using JavaScript and HTML. In essence, the DS gives the construction plan for how the system will be built, including hardware and software specifics. 4. Installation Qualification IQ. Once the system is built and ready to be installed, we need to make sure it's installed correctly. The Installation Qualification IQ, is all about making sure the system is set up exactly as planned. Think of it like setting up a new phone. IQ would check if you've installed the correct apps, connected it to the right network, and if everything is working as per the manufacturer's instructions. Example. We check if the correct version of the database is installed, whether the hardware matches the specifications, and if all components are in place. IQ ensures that the system is installed properly before we move on to testing how it works. 5. Operational Qualification OQ. Now that the system is installed, we need to check if it works properly in its environment. The Operational Qualification OQ, tests whether the system operates as it should. Here, you run tests to check if the system functions according to its specifications. Think of it like driving a car after it's been built. OQ is about making sure the car starts, stops, accelerates, and handles the way you expect under different conditions. Example. We run the system through a series of tests, entering data, retrieving records, generating reports, to see if everything works correctly. OQ ensures the system can perform its functions as expected under normal conditions. 6. Performance Qualification PQ. While OQ checks the system in a controlled environment, Performance Qualification PQ, tests the system in real-world conditions. This is where we simulate how the system will be used on a daily basis, ensuring that it performs consistently over time. Imagine using your car in different weather conditions or during long drives to make sure it performs well in the real world. Example. We use the system in a live production environment to make sure it handles the workload, processes data correctly, and stays reliable over time. PQ is the final step to confirm that the system works exactly as needed in real life. 7. Traceability Matrix TM. Throughout this process, we want to ensure that every single requirement, from the ORS, has been tested and verified. The Traceability Matrix TM, is like a checklist that links each requirement to the specific test that proves it works. If you made a list of all the features you wanted in your car, from the ORS, the TM would show which tests you did to prove that each feature works. Example. Requirement 1.1. The system must store data securely. 
This is tested in OQ Test Case 5 and PQ Test Case 3. The TM ensures that every requirement has been addressed and verified. 8. Test protocols and scripts to ensure thorough testing. We need to follow specific protocols and scripts that outline how each test should be conducted. These are the detailed step-by-step -step instructions for carrying out tests. Think of it like following a recipe in the kitchen. The test protocols tell you exactly what steps to follow to check whether the system meets the requirements. Example. Test protocol 1. Open the system, enter a new patient record, save it, and verify that the data is stored in the database. These protocols ensure that tests are conducted in a standardized and reliable manner. Summary. 1. ORS. Defines what the system should do from the user's perspective. 2. FS. Describes how the system will meet those user requirements. 3. DS. Outlines the detailed plan for how to build the system. 4. IQ. Ensures the system is installed correctly. 5. OQ. Verifies the system operates correctly under expected conditions. 6. PQ. Confirms the system works in the real world. 7. TM. Tracks that all requirements are tested and verified. 8. Test protocols. Provide detailed instructions for testing. By following these steps, the system can be validated to ensure it meets all the requirements, performs reliably, and complies with regulations.